Next thing you want to do on the device is connect to a Wi-Fi network. So to do that, we go back into settings. This time go into wireless controls at the top and turn on Wi-Fi. And that's connected. If you're doing this for the first time, it will bring up a list of the available wireless networks and you connect and enter the details that match your wireless network. So we're now connected and you can see on the top we've got a new icon for the Wi-Fi signal and that we're connected. Next thing you probably want to do on the device is start playing with applications. There's uh, a fairly limited set uh, that come available on the device. Um, but what you probably want to do is get on with your Google Mail, Contacts, Calendar and particularly the Google Market so you can go installing more applications. So in order to do all of that you'll need to sign in with a Google account which we'll just do now. So this will be for the first time. If you don't have a Google account you can at this point create one otherwise you sign in with your existing credentials. To enter anything into a text box you just tap the text box once and Android brings up the keyboard. And when you're done, there's a done button on the keyboard. Then hit sign in. And your phone's all set up. Agree to Google's terms of service. And you can now browse categories or search the marketplace. A keyboard, uh, a different keyboard that we've shown in some other videos that uh, a lot of people have really uh, said is, is really good fun to use, uh, which is called Slide It. And you can search for that. Uh, it's all one word, Slide It. I'll show you as a quick example installing that. That's the top one there, Slide It keyboard. Say install. OK. And that's installing that in the background. When your application is finished installing, you get an indication in the notification area, which you can pull down. So I've got an indication of uh, new emails, as well as that the Slide It keyboard has been installed. To activate that keyboard, you go into your settings back down to locale and text put a tick next to the new keyboard that you've installed and then from within a browser long press on the text box and you can change it to the other keyboard If you want to install an application from an SD card, then you need to allow this. So go into Settings again, go into Applications, and tick the box for Unknown Sources. Say OK. And this tells Android that you're happy installing applications from places other than the marketplace. So I'll show you how to do that. Take your micro SD and pop it in the side of the device. Go to your applications and open up the one that's got a picture of the Android robot next to a package. It's called APK. Choose Installer and this will show you the contents of your SD card. I've put a folder on here called APK. Uh, Android applications are always wrapped up as APK files. Probably something you're going to want to put on here straight away and we put a link to this in the description uh, box for this video is YouTube which uh, was originally on this device but for some reason isn't in this version of the software so you choose the application same as installing an application through the marketplace just say install and then done We've also put a few applications together in a zip file that includes a BBC iPlayer, a Skype client, and an MSN client.
So we've now got the BBC iPlayer, YouTube client, Skype client, and also the MSN client. We've got the built in camera, which I would demonstrate with my assistant. You've got a basic file explorer on here which allow you to look at the content of the device and also of your SD card and move files around. You've also got a task manager. Uh, there are a number of these on the Android marketplace uh, but Android never closes down any application so this allows you to end all running applications uh, or select the ones that you want to want to end and then kill just the selected ones or kill all. The device comes with a tiny little application to turn your Wi-Fi on and off and also 3G on and off should that uh, be available to you. Uh, saves going into the settings so you can simply press the buttons for connect and disconnect over on the left there. I'll just show you the functionality of the web browser If you want a new window, you press the menu button, either software or hard button at the back, and go new window. And then once you've got more than one window, that button changes to windows, which allows you to open either a, a third window in this instance, or go back to your previous window. If within a window you want to uh, you're, you're not on a search page and you just want to type in the address, then you say go and that gives you the option to type in the web address. Last thing I'm going to show you is how to customize your home screen. I've actually got three home screens that you can slide between to do this with. First thing you probably want to do is change the background. So you give a long press on an empty area of the screen, go to wallpapers, you choose either pictures, which will be pictures uh, on your SD card or that you've put on the device, or wallpaper gallery is what comes on the device, there's only a few here. Choose one of those. You've also got widgets, an example of which is the Google search box, but if you want to add other widgets, you choose widgets, choose something from the menu there, and if you want to move that around, long press and you can drag it around or drag it into the dustbin to clear it off your screen. To add an application shortcut, just go into your applications long press on an application you can put it anywhere on the screen then to turn off the device is the same as turning it on you just put do a long press on the front button and power off 